Hi folks, welcome to this video. What we're going to be doing today is looking at how we can create these miniature pie charts that you can see inside these cells. Because the traditional or the, the native Sparkline formula does not have a pie chart option. And I think you'll agree these look pretty darn cool. So let's find out how we can create these miniature pie charts with a special function that we're going to call Spark Pi. We're going to use a named function to create our own special pie chart formula. Now, before we get too much into the weeds, I just need to explain how this is working. These are all images. So we'll get into how it actually gets hold of these images in terms of how it converts that into that shortly. But before we even get there, where are these images coming from? So what I did is I went and created a whole bunch of pie charts for every 10% increment. So 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Saved those images. So I created those pie charts in Google Sheets, saved those images and uploaded them to my website, to my server. And then I made this reference table of them all, which is publicly available. So you can use these same images. And if you copy any one of these images and you go and open them up like this one here, you'll see it's just a picture of a pie chart. I chose the blue color. There you go. You can see if it's got slightly higher percent, it goes further around the pie as you'd expect. So if you want to do something like this on your own with your own colors, you need to find some place where you can have these images online and accessible for your formula, because we're going to use the image formula. That's the key formula we're going to use to grab these URLs of these published images for us to then display here in our sheet. So let's dive in. Okay, so here's the table now that's blank. And you know we want to have our pie charts in here. So first of all, let me just go grab this here and you know what, I'm going to come to just a new sheet for a moment, work on this. We'll put one there. I'm going to copy the other one as well, just to illustrate this, put that underneath. Now, if you look very closely, you'll notice that these two URLs are identical apart from the percent figure. And all of the URLs, if I go back to my actual original table, if you zoom out a little, and actually I'll come down here where they are all just listed again. Each of these images, the only difference is the number, the percent number that it references. All the other, all the other contents of the URL here up to here is, is exactly the same. So that's the one important thing to know. The second thing to know is that if I now go image and use these URLs inside the image function, it will display those miniature pie charts for me inside the cell. And they're simply these images here. So it just goes and grabs the image here that's uploaded in my server, displays them here. So now that we know the pie chart image URL is made up of this part here, which we'll paste here, and then this part here, which we'll paste just underneath, we can combine these two and just whatever the number is in the middle is what we show as our pie chart. So let me show that. Let's say we want to, first of all, let's copy this one again. So we would say equals, that's a string. Then we'll say ampersand, and we'll just do the, say, 50 for now. And then we'll say ampersand, and we want to have percent v2.png on the end. And it just happens to be the, this is just the URL of this image. If I click this, it will take me and open up that image. So I've just built it though as a formula here. Now, of course, instead of writing the word 50 there, I could delete that and just reference the cell above. Now put in say 60 this time, and that will show 60%. And of course I can just do my image on that one there. 60%, 40%. Twenty percent, and it keeps changing this pie chart. So essentially, that's it. But of course, at the moment, if I do a twenty or thirty-five, it's not going to find anything because 
I didn't have an image 35%. Now I could have gone and created a hundred pie charts for every single individual percent. And I did not have the patience to do that though. I felt, I felt like 10 was more than enough. And if you want to, you can go, of course, go and create your own pie charts, upload them to a server and do them every single, every 1%, every 5%. You can make them red, purple, blue, whatever you like. But you're also entirely welcome to use these ones I've created already so you don't have to do any of that. You can simply just use this URL and this URL and be on your way. So the first thing we need to do is round these to some sort of whole number. So we'll say round value and we'll do one decimal place, which is nice, that's the 90%. But really, if I try and now, if I look at my, let's bring this formula here across and we'll just paste that here and then we'll change the A7 to this value here, E2. It's 0 0.9. Now, why is that happening? Because these are percents, which of course are values between zero and one. If I change them to numbers, you can see it's 0 0.9, that's 90%, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, etc rounded up. So what we need to do is actually times this all times 100. And then we're in great shape because you can see that 90% there. So I could drag this down. Then I could just say image loading, drag this one down. And there we go. And perfect. We're done, right? Well, essentially, but if we want to now turn this into something a bit more useful, let's just tidy this whole formula up and then create that named function. So we'll jump into a Lambda function by row. We're going to take this as our range. We're going to say Lambda, that's the anonymous function we apply to each value in the range. So we use V as our designation and the formula expression is you know what, we'll just start with V and then we'll grab each of these in turn. Because it's much easier to do it that way than try and rewrite it all from my head. So we'll copy that first bit of the formula. We need to convert the percent to this rounded number. So we'll just drop that in, change the D2 to the V because it's now being plucked out of this array by the lambda. So there we go. So that's now created this nice formula for us. Then we will just do our appending our string here. So it's very simple. This is just adding that string. We'll hit enter. So there we go. Now it's missing the end of the string. You can see we just need to add the end of the string to all of this, which is that piece with the ampersand. Put that after the 100. There we go. And you know what? I'm going to just put some parentheses around that calculation as well, just for good measure. It didn't affect what was happening, but it just makes it a lot easier to see that that's a calculation step to create the numbers. And then this whole thing is joined into my ampersand. So it's just a nicer way to work. So there we go. So we've got those all set up. And then we just simply can wrap that with the image function, put another bracket on at the end there, and there we go. Perfect. So we've got now a single formula that does the work of all of these previous columns. So it's now a single formula. So I'll copy that, come over into my data, named functions, add new function. I'm going to call it spark pi create mini pie chart in a cell, drop in that function definition. D2 is a range, define it that way. Click next, and this is data for pie charts. And an example range would be A1 to A10, say. Great. Okay, so spark pi equals spark pi. There's my data, hit enter, and look at that. There we go, I can delete 
all of these other columns. And there's a really nice way to add a bit of flair to your spreadsheets with some of these nice Spark pie charts. And then suddenly if this one changes to 24%, it will update that pie chart for me. This one changes to 100%. That one's finished. This goes up to 64%. Uh, uh, and it just it's going to just update those for you and show these really nice little pie charts. Now, if I do another brand new sheet, sheets.new, and we want to use it somewhere else. So let's say we've got some percentages here. Okay, so I've got some ones here. I want to use that Spark Pie here. If I try it now, Spark Pie, it says unknown function Spark Pie, of course, because it doesn't exist in this sheet. It only exists back in this sheet where I created it. So we need to import it first. So data, main functions, import function, recent, let's go find it. It's in this one here. So I'm going to go to the sheet where I created the function and then say, yes, I want to grab this sheet. So we'll say import and then give it a try now. Spark pie is the range. I need to allow access because it grabs external data. So we'll say allow access first time. And there we go. It's now worked in a separate sheet. So I need to create it once in my sort of library of named function sheets. And then I can go and use the spot by everywhere else just by importing it. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed that lesson. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe and I'll see you again soon in another video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks now. Bye-bye.